Boxing Voice. Turn of Boxing to Primetime Network Television as the premier boxing champions brings you their inaugural event, and it, it's a very powerful event. It's live from the MGM Grand Garden Arena on Saturday, March 7th on NBC Network Television starting at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5.30 p.m. Pacific Time. And uh, please note for your readers about those start times, particularly those that are in the uh, MGM uh, the Las Vegas, Los Angeles area for people attending the fight, so they do know that they should be in their seats on time. Uh, again, that's 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 5.30 p.m. Pacific Time, and that will be live on NBC. We're going to get right to the fighters. Today this call is really about the fighters. We have excellent matchups, and we're going to bring you the fighters um, in succession. Uh, we do have Keith Thurman, the WBA welterweight world champion, Robert Guerrero, former four-division world champion, Adrian Broner, former three-division world champion, and John Molina, Jr., the super lightweight contender. We're going to start with Adrian and John Molina, Jr., and they're both on the line and ready to take your calls. Um, let's go right to the calls, uh, the question and answer, please, and then uh, fighters, if you want to make any comments, you can do that while you're answering the questions, Okay. So, operator, let's open it up, please. Thank you. If you would like to ask a question or make a comment, please press star 1 on your phone keypad. Your hand is raised. Please ask your question when prompted. Press the pound sign to lower your hand. If you would like to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad now. Once again, if you would like to ask a question or make a comment, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. That will place you in the question queue. And our first question comes from Lem Satterfield with TheRingTV.com. Lem, are you there? Rosalda, can you check that, please? Yes, one moment. Let's go to the next question and get Lem back on the line, please. I am getting him back right now. Give me just one moment. We're having some technical difficulties. Operator, let's move on to the next guy, and then you can come back to Lem, unless you're having problems with everybody. I'm having yep. trouble, um, yes, so I'm trying to get oh, that. Oh, with all the lines? Yes, so give me just one moment. Everybody stand by. Thanks for your patience. Fighters, thanks for your patience. Actually, while we're waiting, I think everyone can hear you, so... Um, John Molina Jr., do you want to make an opening statement about you know, having the opportunity to fight on this amazing event? Uh, yeah, definitely. It's, it's an exciting, exciting event. It's a huge platform. You know, being that it's back on primetime television, uh, 130 million homes, it doesn't get any bigger than that. And being part of the inaugural um, telecast is, is an amazing, amazing opportunity. I'm looking forward to, to March 7th. Great. Thank you. Adrian, you want to make a comment? Adrian, you there? Okay. Oh, my bad. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. The first call conference is kind of shaky, man. This is funny. <laughs> but, uh, but, um, listen, man, um, it's going to be a, I don't, I don't, I really, you know, don't care what station is on, as long as people can see us fight, and um, obviously it's going to be a lot more people seeing us fight, so um, I'm I'm just ready to put on a show. I know uh, John Molina is going to come swinging for the fences. This is his big, big turnaround for his career. If he beat Adrian Brunner, who knows where his career can go, and um, 
You know, I'm going to do the same thing as I did, as always. I'm going to come put on the show. I'm going to come in dancing and doing what I do and um, do what I got, do whatever I got to do to get my victory, man. John Molina, he's not an enemy, though. I like him. He's kind of cool. He can hang with me one day. <laughs> okay, great. Brusalda, operator? All right, and we'll go ahead and take a Slim Satterfield question now. Let me see if that's working. You guys, you guys ready? Stand by. This, you guys stand by. I'm sorry. This never happens with these with ag, this ag, this conference call operator is excellent. Lam, you there? Yes, I am. Okay, great. Go ahead. Woo. Adrian, how you doing, buddy? What's up, Lam? Hey. Um, you had characterized last time we talked. Um, you had characterized Molina as not being as rough strong or skillful as Madonna. So I'm guessing that you took a lot away from that. You're in a new weight class. Um, and how do you characterize Molina in comparison to the competition you faced in your most recent fight, including Madonna? I mean, you know, um, I take nothing from John Molina. You know, I know he's rough. And tough and it's cool as Cheeto Puffs, but you know, um, I'm the man, man. You know, and, uh, and it's been said once, but uh, I'm gonna say it again, man. I'm the can, man. Anybody can get it. And John Molina's the one that's gonna have to take this beat on March 7th. Like I said, it's nothing personal. He can definitely hang with me March 8th, but um, up until then, he he's definitely um, the opponent. So uh, I'm going in and get my victory. I just have two two more questions for you. Um, you you are in a new weight class. You are in a fourth weight class, and um, you know one of the achievements that could come your way is a fourth title in as many weight classes. And you would be a relatively young fighter to do that. Do you think that some of that is lost on people? Some of your accomplishments are lost on people. And is that a goal of yours to win a fourth title in this weight class? I definitely will be world champion at 140 pounds one day. and um, But this fight, it's not going to happen. You know, my main task is getting my victory, and I'm looking good at doing that. Now, you, the last question is you have said that this fight is going to end with you raising your hands after knocking him out. Um, are you... Sticking to that, or are you going to be, you know, satisfied with with a win? You know, um, a victory is a victory, but um, nothing is like a knockout. You know, I love knockouts, and um, the fans love knockouts and stoppages. And you know, um, I feel like, you know, with my skills, and if I if I come in and do everything I got to do, you know, it's a great chance that I do stop John Molina. And you know, um, this is boxing. A knockout is only one punch away. All right, thank you, Adrian, and good luck in the fight. Uh, John? Yeah. Hey, John, how are you? Um, good, how you doing? Great. You made the analogy uh, the last time we talked of you being a truck and Adrian being a sports car um, and that you were going to bulldoze him uh, and run him over. Can you talk about what you meant by that? Visualize us, give us a visualization of that. Definitely. Well, stylistically, it's it's a great matchup. I mean, it, it's a classic matchup for boxing. You're going to have two different sides of the spectrum as far as stylistically goes. Um, Adrian's very quick-handed, uh, very talented. You, you cannot uh, deny the accolades that he's accomplished in the ring. Um, but, you know, if, if I felt any different about going right through Adrian, I wouldn't be in the right business. Uh, we're extremely 110% confident. We're going to go in there and implement our will and do what we need to do to come victorious that night. Adrian has one plan. I have my plan. We're going to see that night, March 7th, who's going to come out on top. When you say you're going to run right through him, you really feel like you can take it to him and put him, make him feel uncomfortable throughout most of the fight? 
if I felt any different, like I said before, I would be in the wrong business. But absolutely, I feel like uh, I'll be the stronger man in the ring uh, again. Uh, this is um, this is how I feel. This is how I feel going into the fight. 100% confident that I, I will be able to implement my will and do what I need to do to become victorious that night. So my last question for you is: He he has said that that he he believes he can knock you out. Um, you know, obviously Matisse and your fight was a rugged fight, but he took some. He took some to get some. Um, would would Adrian trying to knock you out uh, play into your hands at all, or your thoughts? To me, I, I can care less what Adrian Broner brings to the table. That I, I don't worry about what he's doing in his camp because if I did that, I, I have things that I have to work on in my camp in order to become victorious that night. But, uh, of course, I believe Adrian's a true fighter. I think that he's going to try to sit there and engage with me. I think he has, a, you know, a huge uh, pride and a, and a, and a lot of uh, big ego, so he'll definitely want to sit there and ex- exchange with me. And, um, like I said, that, that would be something we'll, we'll definitely walk with open arms. That's my style. It's no secret. I've always said it best. You're not going to play uh, chess with Bobby Fischer. You know, I, I'm not going to sit there and say that I'm um, quicker-handed than Adrian Brunner because that's not the case. But I have my strengths. He has his strengths. And we're going to see which one comes out on top uh, March 7th. But definitely – uh, looking forward to March 7th. We're preparing 110% for this fight. We're doing everything humanly possible to be prepared, and I believe the fans are really going to win on this one because you have two guys that, that believe they're going to be victorious March 7th. And March 7th, they, we're going to find out who really is telling the truth. Hey, guys, thank you very much. Good luck in the fight. Thank you. Our next question comes from Kel Dansby with Black Sports. First question is for Adrian. Hello, you got me? Yeah, what's up? Adrian, uh, how do you feel entering this, you know, camp? Uh, how's your weight going? A lot of people make fun of, like, you know, you eating whatever you want between fights or just having fun and partying, but you always make weight. Uh, do you feel the same coming into this fight? Has it been a struggle? How's it going? Oh, man. Uh, listen, I don't I don't have a I have problem making weight, and um. I, I do what I do, and, and and a lot of people they can they can think whatever. As long as I come prepared and I make weight, I'm I'm all right. And now that you're at a lower weight than uh you were before, do you think your power will transition better to this weight class? Is that is that why you're predicting a knockout victory? I mean, you know, um, when I when I when I stepped up in weight, you know, I was still a lightweight, you know, and um I'm I'm going into 140 pounds now, and, uh, you know, um, it will show March 7th. You know, uh, I just hope John Molina is ready. It's going to be fun. When you look at a fighter like Molina, who everyone considers to have the power advantage, do you really want to make this, uh, I, I guess, a, a brawl type of fight? Is that something you look at going in, or are you just going to try to dance around him and uh, win this fight at the end? What's your plan going into this? Um, listen, this is what you do. You watch the fight, and then you tell me how you like it after the fight. <laughs> All right, good enough. Uh, Melina, next question for you. Um, Looking at a fighter like Adrian, who obviously is very charismatic, who plays for his fans, you know, he may talk a little bit. Does that give you extra fuel when training for him? No, I mean, you don't expect anything less. I mean, if it, was, if it wasn't vintage Adrian Broner being charismatic and braggadocious outside of the ring, then I would think there was a problem. But, uh, no, I mean, this is what you fully anticipate going into to, to this fight. We we knew what we were facing. We knew what we, were, what we were getting in there with. We know exactly. So, you know, that's the beauty of boxing. Boxing is not a debate contest. Boxing is not a, a, a song and dance. Boxing is, is – is, we, we don't play this sport. We, we actually live it. We We fight. We go in there, and it's two men that are world-class athletes that are going to go in there and, and bring their best A game to the table. I mean, this is this is a very, very uh, uh, brutal sport, if you will, and I believe that's why the fans love this sport. But, no, uh, we don't uh, take what he says that at Field of the Fire. I mean, it's a pride issue. I hate to lose at checkers. I mean, my, my competitive nature is has always been strong, and, it, and I don't anticipate it being any less strong uh, come March 7th. So we're, we're definitely looking forward to March 7th. Is there anything you can tell us about uh, that Maidana fight that he had and something that you can take away from it that you can use to your advantage coming into this fight? Well, you know, I, I, I always 
really discredit and don't like when people say, well, I've seen this fight. I know exactly how that guy's going to fight. To me, every every man is different. I've seen how Adrian Broner fights. I've seen how he reacts under pressure, but not under pressure from me, under pressure from Marcos Maidana, under pressure from guys like, like uh, Ponce de Leon. I've seen how he reacts in, in those guys. But then again, March 7th, it'll be the first time I'll be facing Adrian Broner. So then I can make my full analysis on what and how he's going to react uh, on the pressure that I'm going to apply to him. So we can take uh, little bits and pieces of it and, and get recognized with his attributes and, and things that he he does in there. But, again, like Mike Tyson said, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. So March 7th, we got to train, train for the best Adrian Broner. we got to train for the Adrian Broner that's going to move. we got to train for the Adrian Broner that's going to come forward. We're going to train for the Adrian Broner that's going to try to put on the show. That That's our best bet. If we try to take a piece out of Maidana's book or a piece out of Pauline Malnagy's book, we're, we're setting ourselves up for failure. We can see how he reacts in, in certain situations, but it'll be the first time he ever reacts to my situation March 7th. All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right. Our next question comes from Mike Woods with Sweet Science. Good time. Appreciate it. First question is from Mr. Molina. John, I'd like your response to people who say, hey, come on, Molina's coming off two losses, and he doesn't deserve this fight. you got no shortage of people saying that on the Internet. So your response, please, to them. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, people are going to say what they're going to say, but the reality is that people are falling in love with my style given the fact that uh, I, I'm more of the – I had the scenic route to get to where I'm at. You know, I didn't have the, the, the accolades in the amateur career. I didn't have – I didn't turn pro until I was 24 years old. Um, so it definitely, it, it took a while to get to this plateau, this level, if you will. But at the same time, um, I've left it all in the ring. I plan on leaving it all in the ring every time I go in there. You know, boxing has provided for my family, has has, has got, gotten me everything I have today to show for, so I'll never disrespect boxing or spit in its face because of what it's provided for my family. And I, I'm a family man, and I take that very serious. So I, I believe that... The, the true fans or true fans of mine know what they're going to get March 7th. They know that I'm bringing everything to the table. And, you know, a lot of fighters say that, that they'll go out on their show, but I, I truly mean it. I mean, this is not just me fighting for, for my pride issue. This is me fighting for my family. This is for me to, uh, to better my family's life. So I take that very, very serious. I mean, the, the, the unconditional love that you have for your, for your kid, for, for your wife, I mean, this, is, this, can, this can only enhance their life. So I think it's very serious, and I believe that will show forth March 7th. Adrian, uh, what about you? Some people saying, you know, you're fighting a guy who's coming off of two losses. Uh, you should be fighting Madonna again. What's your response to that to those people? <laughs> hey, I'll fight you too if they pay me as much as they're going to pay me. <laughs> no, I, no, I don't way. think you get too much to fight me. That would be too easy. That'd be too it, easy. Ain't, it, it, ain't, it ain't about who I fight no more. They just want to see me fight. Listen. I tried to fight Madonna on Sunday, the Saturday night he beat me. I tried to fight him on Sunday. I can't wait to fight Madonna again, but the guy I got to fight is John Molina, so, so I'm going to handle my business and worry about worry about my Madonna rematch next. Excellent. Good stuff. Thanks, guys. Be well. Thank you. Our last question comes from Dan Raphael with ESPN. Can you there? Oh, yeah. John? Oh, yeah. Uh, John? Yes. Hang on one sec. Oh, yeah. I'm here. Stand by. Dan, Dan's here. Stand by. Dan, go ahead. Hey, guys. Can you hear me all right? <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, John, this question is for you. Uh, you know, you're, you're coming off two losses in a row, but I think if you ask your average boxing fan, uh, do they realize that or do they care? They'd probably say no because, you know, you're a guy that always provides a quality, entertaining fight. Um, do you think that because of that, that even though you lost a couple of fights in a row, that you're in a position to fight on, on a huge stage like uh, primetime NBC, uh, be, that despite the losses because of your fan-friendly style like you've been talking about, that, that that's the reason – why you're being put in on this tremendous platform? I believe so. Like they say, uh, boxing is going back to primetime television. If you look back at the old-time fighters, the, 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 the O and the losses weren't, I mean, these are 
you expected because you had the best fighting the best. But I mean, we, we don't go out there. We don't go out there anticipating to lose. We go out there to put it all on the table. I want to fight. You know, the the fans are going to pay the hard earned money to watch me fight. I'm going to give them a fight. Um, and a win over Adrian Broner uh, erases any any uh, hiccups that we had in our career thus far. That, that that's how big of, of a name Adrian Broner brings to the table, and I can respect that. But at the same time, we're we're, we're out there to, to to be victorious, give the fans a treat, and and leave it all on the table. And I fully anticipate on doing that March seventh. We're preparing very very extremely well. Uh, to be the best we can be that night. And I believe um, everyone got it right by putting the styles up, uh, myself and Adrian Broder, together on that card that night, March 7th, on primetime television. John, the uh, other thing I want to ask you is, because I'm not sure about this, Are you who is training you for this fight? Are you back with Joe, with Joe Goosen, or are you somewhere else? Yeah, Joe Goosen is training me for this fight. And did he train you for the – so I don't remember. If he, when was – did he train you for your last few fights or not? Uh, he trained me for my Matisse fight, not for the Soto fight, but he did train, train me for the Matisse fight. Okay, who was your trainer in this Humberto Soto? Uh, uh, that was uh, Jose Santa Cruz, uh, Leo Santa Cruz's father. Got you. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. Appreciate your uh, your time. I want to ask Adrian a question. Adrian, are you there? What's up, Dan? Hey, Adrian, how are you? Um, I heard you uh, men- heard you mention to one of the other uh, questioners earlier that you wanted to uh, that there was no doubt in your mind that at some point. In the future, you would become uh, a champion in the 140-pound weight division. I'm wondering, uh, is that is that something that is extremely important to you, or if other opportunities were there to to uh, fight other non-title fights at 140 or fight for a title again at 147 or something like that? Where where is that on your to-do list, so to speak, at 140? That's first. That's first to do. But you know. Um... If it was up to me, I'll I, I fight for the title right now if I could. But, you know, uh, the sport that we're in, you know, I, I just fight whoever they put in front of me. And John is the guy they put in front of me. So that's why I'm going to fight. You know that, man. I'll fight anybody, man. Understood. Um, the other question I was I have for you, similar to what I had asked John, was, um, I mean, you guys are the opening TV fight on the very first card that they're having on NBC in prime time, which has not happened for – uh, many many years that there's been boxing on primetime network television. Um, how stoked are you for that? To be like first out of the gate and be able to basically set to set the you know what people are going to see. You know, really make an impression right off the bat. I mean, you know, uh, to me it's just another day in the ring. But you know what? Uh, this is this is bigger than big. You know, this is uh, bigger than a nutty professor family. You know, and. Um, <laughs> And um, I'm definitely going to put on a show, and, and I'm going to be ready March 7th. All right, very good. Adrian, thank you. And, John, thank you, guys. Appreciate your time today. You're welcome. Uh, okay, great. That was uh, That's the time we have for Adrian and John. So, you guys, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate your time, and we will see you fighting on March 7th. Thank you very much. We're gonna, you guys can hang up, and now we're going to transition over to the other bout, the main event for, again, the return of boxing to primetime network television as Premier Boxing Champions brings you their inaugural event, live from the MGM Grand Garden Arena on Saturday, March 7th on NBC, starting at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 5.30 p.m. Pacific Time, and again, please, if you could note that for your readers, so everybody's in front of their television and also in their seats at the arena on time to see these great matchups. Um, so um, we are just about to get ready. Uh, Keith, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, great. Thank you. And uh, Robert, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Okay, great. Thanks so much. So now I'd like to introduce Keith Norman, the W. WBA welterweight world champion. Hang on one sec. And Robert Guerrero, the former four division world champion. Uh, you guys, if you want to just make an, a quick opening statement, then we'll open it up for questions. Why don't we start with you, Robert? Hi, everybody out there. Uh, man, I'm excited. Uh, you know, to be on this card. First one to open up. Uh, you know, the fights on NBC. Um, you know, thank you for your time and uh, your questions uh, in advance. So um, let's get to going. Okay, great. And Keith, from you. What's up, everybody? Uh, I had to hop out of my bath for this. I don't really mind. Um, we're training hard. We're getting ready. Everybody's stoked. 
Uh, a lot of people are looking forward to what's about to happen in the world of boxing, and we're all looking forward to March 7th. So let's do this. Okay, great. Uh, thank you. Okay, operator, let's go ahead and open this back up for questioning. All right, once again, as a reminder, if you'd like to ask a question, raise your hand by pressing star 1 on the telephone key. Your hand is raised. Please ask your question when prompted. Press the pound sign to lower your hand. Stand by. Our first question comes from Lem Satterfield with RingTV.com. Hey, guys. How are you? Hey, how's it going, Lem? Great, great. Um, uh, I spoke to you guys last week. I just want to ask you one question real quick, Robert. Um, you you called him, I guess, the running man. Um, is that based off of his last fight? I know he's he can box, he can punch, um, but is it your belief that he's going to try to box you and, or so-called run, as you said? No, I didn't call him that. My father called him that. Um, you know, I respect every fighter that comes in the ring with me. Um, you know, Keith Femme, he's a great fighter. You know, he's quick on his quick on his feet, quick hands, got power. Um, you got to respect that. Um, you know, my, my whole idea is to come ready to for whatever's going to happen in that ring. Uh, you know, whether it's inside, outside, uh, you know, whatever happens. If uh, he gets on the move, you got to be ready for it. And um, you know, it's uh, being well prepared for the fight. And uh, you know, we're professionals, and that's what we do is we get well prepared to to be in that ring. I do have one more question for you um, on the Fred, uh, the fact that you fought Floyd Mayweather and you were part of a, a pay-per-view event, a major, a big promotion. Um, how much of that you given, you know, that experience and the fact that you fought on such a high level against the number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world? Um, you know, it's uh, it's an experience, you know. Especially uh, you know, everything that comes around, the whole circus with, with Floyd and, um, you know, with the all accesses and all that stuff, you know, in your camp, you know, following you around day to day, um, you know, it, it's a big deal. It's a big deal, and uh, you got to be well prepared for it because, uh, um, you know, it, it, it could be a distraction if you let it, and, um, you know, you got to be you got to be 100% focused, and, uh, you know, I think this is going to be even bigger, uh, you know, with the viewing audience that, come in, that comes along with uh, NBC, it's going to be even bigger, so. Um, you know, I, I'm excited about it and, uh, you know, very focused and ready to go. Thanks a lot, Robert. Good luck in the fight. Uh, Keith, you there? Yeah, what up? Hey, buddy. How you doing? Um, you kind of expressed, you know, we, you are one time and, you know, you are the knockout guy and a lot of people, you know, you even said that it, it you kind of don't feel right if you don't get the knockout. You like knockouts. Um, and you didn't get that in, a, in your last fight. Is that something you want badly in this fight? Uh, definitely. You know, uh, we respect Robert. Robert's never been stopped. And when I hear a fighter's never been stopped, I hear that as a challenge, you know, especially being a puncher um, and knowing that he's coming up from the lighter divisions. You know, those fighters... Floyd Mayweather came up from the lighter division. Manny Pacquiao came up from the lighter division. You know, so there are some of the best fighters in the world make their way up into the welterweight division, and they hold their own, and they go toe-to-toe -to -toe with guys like me who were originally 147 pounds, always was and always will be. Um, last fight, we got a knockdown. So I satisfied a little bit of the puncher in me by um, producing a knockdown in the first round of the last fight. I just wasn't able to put the icing on the cake um, by cutting the cutting the bout short. We're going to be training extremely hard for this fight. We're truly looking forward to the challenge that the Ghost is going to bring, and we are looking forward to having a fight that goes less than 12 rounds. But we will be prepared no matter what the outcome. Okay, my last question to you is that you did you do respect his ability to be crafty. You acknowledged that the last time we talked. Um, you said there probably will be or could be something in his arsenal that you might not have prepared for that you will have to adjust to in the ring. And among those things, you included his ability to hold, to be physical, and you referred to the Andre Berto fight. Can you characterize what you meant by that and how you plan, you know, to deal with that? Um. We've watched we've watched more than just the Andre Berto fight now, and um, you know he 
he's an active fighter. He's an active fighter. He will fight you on the inside. He'll try to hit you with his power punches from the outside. And if you're holding him or he's holding you, that doesn't mean that he's going to stop fighting. He will keep fighting every second of the fight. Um, he's well conditioned from what I've seen. You know, he's, he's saying that he's going to be prepared. I believe the man. Um, we're at a world class level. Every fighter at this stage should be prepared. Excuse me, my dogs are going a little crazy. Give me one second. Um, but um, but I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little wrestling um in in my training camp here. You know, we're gonna we're gonna get ready. I don't want. I don't want it to be a shock to me, you know. He's not going to be able to surprise me by roughhousing me on the inside. We're going to do the best that we can. You know, we're obviously going to bring South Paul sparring into the camp, but I'm not going to be able to bring Guerrero into the camp, you know what I mean? So there should be some a few minor changes that I'm going to have to make fight night, but we're going to do the best that we can to be prepared for the fight. Guys, thank you so much, and good luck in the fight. Thank you, Len. Hey, thank you, Len. Go ahead, operator. Our next question comes from Steve Cart from the Las Vegas. Hi, guys. Thanks for uh, being on the call today. Keith, uh, I just want to follow up on uh, your answer uh, about getting ready for uh, for this fight with Robert. And uh, when, when you have to prepare for a, a totally different style than what you did your last fight, uh, how excited does that get you to come to the gym every day and also uh, the challenges that come in getting prepared to fight a guy like Robert Guerrero? We're just excited, man. We we love to switch it up, you know. Um, unlike Mayweather, I like diversity, you know. <laughs> uh, like I want to fight the boxers. I want to fight the punchers. I want to fight the world, baby. You know, we want the whole world. Um Come one, come all, you know. Um, so March 7th is Robert the Ghost Guerrero. It's been a long time since I've had a face a fighter like him who uh, has the experience that he has and has the uh, mentality that he has and has the roughness that he has. And we're looking forward to those challenges and we're looking forward to overcoming them. Great. Thank you, Keith. And, and for Robert, um I understand you, you've already begun your sparring for this fight. What, what are you looking for out of your sparring partners to get ready for Keith? Um, you know, just guys that can box, can punch, guys that are inside, outside. You know, pretty much we're bringing a variety of sparring, you know. you got to be prepared for everything, um, you know. And, uh, you know, one thing i got to say is, you know, Keith hasn't fought nobody like me. He's fought mm-hmm. tough guys, guys with experience, but he hasn't fought nobody like me. So, um, you know, we're going to be 100% hundred percent prepared and uh you know, you see me in the gym, Steve. We we, we come and, and we get it. We come to get it and, and we work hard. Yeah. No, because I think it's a very compelling fight and I, I think both of you guys uh will have no problem preparing because uh of the respect you have for each other's abilities. So uh I was just curious about how your your sparring was uh gonna be approached as you got ready for this. Very good. Well, listen, thanks guys. We'll see you uh, in Vegas in a few weeks. Hey, thank you, Steve. Appreciate it. Take care. Next question, operator. Our next question comes from Mr. Gibbs from thatboxingvoice.com. Mute off. Hi, my question is for Keith. Keith, how you doing? It's Nestor. Doing great, man. Uh, I wanted to ask, uh, because a few few weeks ago, probably a month ago, we spoke, and, uh, you know, before this fight was finalized, you had mentioned Robert Guerrero as one of the many on your list that ducked you. Um, do you still feel that way, or did you realize it was boxing politics, and are you going to use that same mentality that you feel he may be a bit intimidated by you, and that's why this fight took so long to happen, uh, as, a bit of a, as a bit of an advantage in this fight? You know, most, most ducking that occurs in the sport of boxing is political, you know, um, whether it be on the promoter's end, whether it be on the manager's end, or whether it be on the trainer's end, or even the fighter's end. You know, everybody has a reason to go the route that they go in the world of boxing. Um, I've said this before in my statements, you know, 
I've I've said a lot about people who have avoided me, but at the end of the day, I'm truly not mad at nobody because we're all in it for the same reasons, man. We're all in it to have the career that we want and to put food on our tables uh, for our families, you know. Um, this is a career. This is a sport. Um, so the pride and the fighter in me says let's all fight. But I know the businessman in me and the businessman inside the rest of these fighters they're going to – them and their team are going to strategically plan out their careers. And it's taken a little while, but here I am, me and the ghost. Um, he's known that I've been knocking on his door. We've been trying to get this fight for a while. He's ready for it. Um, they took their time, but now they feel like it is the time. You know, he said it himself, I've never fought a fighter like him, and he's correct. I've never fought Robert the Ghost Guerrero. Every single fighter is an individual, and I look forward to what he brings to the table come March 7th. Now, Keith, in the lead-up to the Bundu fight, you said that Bundu was going to be the closest thing to Mayweather that you were going to fight because of his age, his experience, and his undefeated record at the time. Uh, when you take mm-hmm. that into consideration, the way that you outboxed him, many fans probably weren't pleased with that because they're known for you to be one time this knockout artist, but you put on a beautiful boxing performance, which in comparison is similar to the Robert Guerrero Mayweather fight. Is that the same style that you're going to use in this fight for Robert Guerrero because this would be a common opponent which would lead you to a Mayweather fight that you've been asking for since Orlando Laura? We have options in this fight, you know. Um, I plan on Robert coming in, trying to take it, trying to bring the dog out of me, show me the dog within himself and show me, you know, how tough he really is and and back up all that um, him and his team have stated before. We, myself, I pick, I pick individually, I pick how I want to perform. I have a game plan mentally going into the fight. This game plan is, you know, we're going to show him that we can do what we want to do to him, you know. He's going to back up this fight. He's going to move forward this fight. We're going to do our best to control the fight. If I feel I can control the fight, if I feel I can control the fight in the middle or by pushing him to the ropes or if I can control the fight on the outside, I'm going to figure that out within the first half of the fight. As long as the fight continues after the first half of the fight, I will permanently pick what I need to do to just to strategically win the complete second half of the fight hands down. You know, some, something that a lot of people don't understand about the sport is if you're not going to get the knockout, you've got to prepare for the decision. The only way to fully prepare for the decision is to win seven out of 12 rounds. That's all you need. You need seven hands down, no controversy. You need to win seven out of 12. That's the fight plan, and that's why I say that Mayweather – is the best seven-round fighter in the world because he's never lost a match. Well, Keith, thank you for your time, and we'll be seeing you in Vegas. Uh, Robert, I just wanted to ask, so I wanted to know, what do you feel has changed or what's different between the Robert Guerrero from the Joel Casamayorga fight up until the Cassidy's fight? Because it seemed like once you stepped up in weight, you've thrown away your boxing ability. Uh, we, we've known you as a lightweight to be able to use the ring and outbox guys truly outclass them with your boxing ability. But moving into welterweight, you chose to be this this uh, brawler. With Bertho, you showed that. With Kamagai, you definitely showed it. And with Aideen as well. Why did you change your style when it was so effective in the past? You know, it's that hunger, man. It's that hunger to get in there and fight. As, uh, as John John Believa said earlier in his interview, hey, we're here to fight. We're here to make it happen. We're here to give the fans a treat. You know, moving up to weight classes to 147 pounds, you know, people thought I was crazy. People looked at me and laughed. They're like, this guy's nuts. What is he doing? He's going to end his career. He's suicide. So I had to show everybody in the world, like, hey, you know what? I'm here. I'm going to come and take it. I'm going to come and get this weight class, and I'm going to come and, come and destroy whoever gets in my way. And what you asked Keith earlier about uh, about the last guy that he fought, that he's like the best to, towards Mayweather, similar style, that guy was the slowest guy on his feet ever. Mayweather is fast. I've been in there with him. He is fast mm-hmm. on his feet and with his hands. 
That guy was no comparison at all. It was his accomplishments, not his style. It was just his accomplishments. Being an Olympian and being undefeated. That's where I made the comparison. Oh man, if you're comparing uh if you're comparing the stats like that, I mean huh, it's a lot. Well, I love I love the animosity between you guys. So listen, Robert. Um obviously uh Thurman feels that Bundu was some sort of uh comparison barometer towards a style similar to Mayweather. But now you're facing a guy with another style similar to Mayweather because not only can he box, but he can punch. So he's slightly a bit more dangerous in that fact. I mean, we have his experience isn't there, but he passes the eye test. And in your last fight with Mayweather, which was a boxer, you didn't do that Nestor. well. Yes. Nestor, this is Kelly. Could you just ask the question, please? We have to move on. Okay. Well, in your last fight, you didn't do that well with Mayweather. Being as though the Keith has that style and more power than Mayweather, what are you going to do differently? Hey, you learn from experiences. You know, Mayweather was a big experience for me. Um, Mute on. You go down, you break, you break down tape, and uh, you work off your game plan, and uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to work off our game plan. We're, you know, we're breaking down film on, on Keith, and, uh, you know, we got something in store for him. Okay, thank you. Next question, please. Mike, your line is open. Please ask your question. Hey, guys. Thanks for taking the time. I appreciate it. Uh, Robert, we spoke last week, and uh, you were uh, unsparing in your comments. You had your game face on. You said on March 7th, the talk is over. I plan on leaving Keith Thurman's face worse than Berto's. I'm wondering, is there an extra special hunger and anger and desire to put a hurting on Thurman this time around as compared to maybe some other fights? You know, there ain't, there ain't no anger or anything. It's just coming out and fighting, coming out and doing your job and doing it to the best you can. And, um, you know, this is a big deal. NBC, we got to come out. Uh, you know, we got to come out and show the fans and, uh, you know, people that are not boxing fans that are going to be watching also, you got to come and get them and win their hearts and show them, hey, we're here to fight. And question for Keith. Yeah, could you amplify a little bit talking about all these eyeballs that are going to be on this fight? Um, people are going to be channel flipping, surfing, and if they stop and start watching a brawl, man, they're going to, they're going to stay with it. You guys can make so many more boxing fans. Can you talk about that a little bit? What a, what a grand opportunity this is. Oh, this is um, this is a dream come true. You know, I remember when I was 10 years old and I was looking through a history book on boxing and I said to myself, wouldn't it be amazing for you, your face to be in a book like this one day? And I believe now that NBC is back into boxing on prime time, m many fighters in all of the weight classes um have an extreme opportunity to start building that household name. You will you will the world will start hearing more about these fighters and eventually our names will get put on the list with Oscar De La Hoya, Sugar Ray Leonard, Roberto Duran, Tommy Hearns, Hag, uh Tyson, Evander, you know, so this is it, man. We're we're about to bring boxing back 2015. I'm truly looking forward to it. Yeah, I don't think some people realize the immensity of, of all those possible eyeballs. I think the sport can really grow. I appreciate it, guys. Have a great fight. Hey, thank you. Our last question comes from Dan Raphael with ESPN. Hey, fellas. Uh, my first question is for you, Robert. Um, How's it going, Dan? It's going good, thanks. Um, so you had uh, the fight with Kamagai that was this past June, but you only had the one fight in 2014. You had, uh, obviously, a huge fight in 2013 with Mayweather. I'm wondering, uh, um, why the long layoff? Did you did you look to fight a second fight last year? Do you have an injury? What was going on that you only had the one fight last year? And really, um, only, two fight, only one fight in 2011 also. It's really only been one year out of the past few that you had two bouts in a year, which was 2012. Um, any particular thing going on with the long layoffs? Um. No, you know, just took a little time. You know, I had the fight with Berto. I had the fight with 18, then Mayweather. So, um, you know, making making the jump to weight classes, you know, it takes a lot out of you, you know, getting in with the bigger guys and, and you know, all the hard training and then the type of fights that I was fighting too. Uh, 
you know, I was coming in going to war. So, um, you know, it takes a lot out of your body, and, uh, you know, you need re- you need time to recover. So, uh, you know, it took a little time to recover, spend with the family, and, uh, you know, got back in with Comic Guy, and now we're in with Thurman. So uh, focus is on Thurman, and we're going to be ready for it. The other question I have for you, Robert, is this. Uh, you know, you mentioned, <clears throat> excuse me, that you, uh, you know, you did move up a couple of weight classes and, and you took the time off after Common Guy because you're getting used to the to the weight division. But this fight with Keith has been talked about. I guess I remember it being brought up uh, by Golden Boy, you know, sometime in the early part of last year that there was some discussion about trying to make it. Is this a fight that you've been interested in all along and it's just sort of now is the time when it when it made the most sense from a business point of view or, or was this something that you wanted all along and, and others were not looking to make the fight? Can you... It seems oh, like you definitely. guys have kind of been on a collision course for a little while. Oh, definitely. Definitely, Dan. You know me. I fight anybody. You know, I do I do things uh, that a lot of fighters don't do, you know, move weight classes, jump up in weight class. Um, you know, the challenge is always uh, – I'm always up for the challenge. And, um, you know, everybody's in my radar looking for the best, looking to fight the best, because if you want to be the best, you got to fight the best. So, um, you know, Keith Thurman's one of the best fighters in the world right now, and, uh, you know – that's who we got March 7th, and uh, we're going to go out there and do what we got to do. Was there something specific about Keith that made you want him more than some other particular opponent? But you guys uh, play in a, they, you find a, you find a deep weight class where there's you guys have a lot of options. Um, yeah, you know, it's just uh, fighting the best. That's it, fighting the best. And, uh, you know, Keith Thurman, I mean, look what they call him one time. He's been taking everybody out, and uh, it's, uh, it's a great challenge for me. I got you. Appreciate that. Uh, Keith, you there, Keith? Yep. I'm hey, here. Keith. Good to talk to you today. Um, I remember before uh, when the, when you were promoting the, the the fight with Leonard Bundu uh, from a few months ago, you know your thing was that you just wanted to fight a big name. I mean, you, you know, you knew that you had a lot of uh, a lot of potential, a lot of ability. You were undefeated, knocking guys out, but you kept saying, "I want a big name. I want a big name." Does Robert Guerrero, in your mind, qualify as finally getting a big name? He does. You know, Ring Magazine has him ranked right under me. He's um ranked number eight right now currently by Ring Magazine. I'm ranked number seven. I think this is a terrific fight. This is um this is how we break the ice. I really believe that my career is truly starting on March seventh, fighting Robert the Ghost Guerrero in the same venue that he fought Mayweather in. So this is a terrific opportunity to showcase my skills and my talent once more to the world of boxing. But after March seventh, they can no longer say who has Keith one time Thurman fought. And uh, I asked Robert about the fact that this fight has been kind of discussed for a while now. It's finally come to fruition uh, for March 7th. But was it a little bit frustrating that you couldn't get uh, Robert or any other particular big name um, a little bit sooner, or are you okay with the way the schedule's worked out? Because I know this was a fight, like I said, that's been talked about for a little while. I mean, of course it could have happened sooner. A lot of things could have happened sooner. Why are Mayweather and Pacquiao still in negotiations right now? (laughs) Things could always happen sooner, you know. Um, but I'm a man of faith. I believe that everything happens for a reason. Um, I'm happy. You know, if if we would have fought sooner, we would not be the main event. Not at least not me. I wouldn't. You know, uh, I most likely would not have been the main event. It would have had to been some form of a co-feature. So to be headlining on NBC Primetime Network, I really can't ask for anything else. Robert the Ghost Guerrero, this is a perfect opportunity. You know, he wants to make a big statement. No one's beaten, beaten me to this day. There's no better way in the welterweight division for someone who's jumping up two weight classes to make a better statement besides taking out one of the youngest and toughest welterweights in the division today. Um, and for myself, this is a measuring stick to outperform Mayweather and Mayweather's hometown. So for both of us, this is just extremely um, exciting, and this is a real fight. We both have a lot to win. We have, you know, there's a lot to gain from a victory here. And March 7th, man, the fans have something truly to look forward to. Yeah, I agree with that. One other question hey, for you. Dan. Um, yes, sir. Put it this way. It's the biggest stage in the last 30 years, bigger than Mayweather or anything out there. Yeah, it's big. I, I, I agree. Um. I had one other question for for you, Keith. Um, hasn't gotten a lot of publicity, but I guess it basically in a, in, a, in a paperwork move, the WBA has made you its regular title holder as opposed to the interim title holder. Um, how did you come to find out about it, and what are your thoughts about that? I have not come to find out about that. You're the first one. 
<laughs> to mention anything to me, you know. Um, me and my team, we joke about it all the time, you know, that I'm being treated like the champion, you know, um, because Mayweather has two belts. He's They've yet to issue a mandatory for uh, for it, you know. I mean, he doesn't have to take the mandatory. They can issue the mandatory. He could vacate the belt, and I could fight for it. I've I've been saying that for the past year. Um, well, you are you are now their full title holder. I mean, that's what Dave said. Um, well, I thank you very I, much. For, I, I you know, thank you for that. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, man. Um, you know, we there's a lot of different alphabet belts out there. Um, if that's what they chose to do, I'm truly grateful for that. Um, um, it's an honor for them to raise raise me up to that level. Um, but at the end of the day, man, with a belt, without a belt, it doesn't matter. You know, we're in the ring. You know, I'm ready to fight Robert the Ghost Guerrero. March 7th, and I'm going to do my job. I'm truly looking forward to it. All right, guys. Thank you so much for the time today. I look forward to this fight. Appreciate it, guys. All right. You have a good day, guys. Okay, great. That wraps up our call. Thank you so much, uh, Keith and Robert, for uh, taking the time to talk to the media, Adrian and John as well, and thank you, media, for calling in. And, again, we look forward to this fantastic night of boxing. Thanks, everybody. The Boxing Voice.